Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. And you know, if you're ever going to overcome fear, the first thing you have to do is decide that you're going to break up with fear, that you're going to have an attitude toward yourself. No fear lives here. The only acceptable attitude that a Christian should have is I will not fear. And you know, King David, the psalmist David, he said that several times in the Psalms, I will not fear. What can man do unto me? If God is for me, who can be against me? And I love that I will not fear. He certainly wasn't saying I don't feel fear. He was making a decision that he was not going to let fear rule his life. And I think that's the first thing that we all have to do. You know, sometimes you've had something for so long in your life that you just get miserably comfortable with it. You don't really like it, but you've had it for so long that you settle down and just think, well, I guess this is the way it is, or this is just the way I am, or this is the way life is, and you don't even believe that you can live any other way. You know, in my childhood, I was abused sexually by my dad for a lot of years, and so my life was rooted in fear. My dad was an angry man, and he drank a lot, and he would come home angry and get violent with my mom and rant and rave and yell, and then there was all the abuse, and I just remember growing up in fear. And so it was challenging for me to learn to not live in that fear. And I had to learn one thing at a time, one step at a time, one day at a time. But I have learned a lot of things over the years, and I believe you can benefit from some of the experiences that I've gone through. Some of them were very difficult, some were painful, but I believe that I can help you avoid some of that pain in your life if you will also learn to say, I will not fear. You know, God has not given us a spirit of fear. Fear is not from God. God has given us a spirit of power and love and a sound mind. When fear attacks us, it's the enemy, it's the devil, and he's always trying to get us or to keep us from making progress. Let's just say, for example, that you want to go back to college. Maybe you're in your 40s and you never got a college degree and you've decided you'd like to go to college and get a degree. Well, probably the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to be afraid that maybe you're too old or you're going to be afraid that you can't learn at your age or you're going to be afraid you won't get accepted into college. One thing's for sure, if God's put a good idea in your heart, something that's going to bless you and bless your family, something that's a desire of your heart, it's not God then putting that fear in there telling you not to do it, but it is the enemy because he doesn't want you to make progress. So I'm asking you today, if you will make a decision First and foremost, I am not going to live in fear. Now that doesn't mean that you will never feel fear, but it does mean that you can learn how to conquer it and overcome it. And we're gonna talk more about that on another one of these little mini teachings. In order to live courageously, and living courageously means that I'm gonna learn to follow my heart, I'm gonna take risks, I'm going to be bold, I'm going to step out and really work with the Holy Spirit to be not just okay, not just average, not just ordinary, but to be somebody who really makes a difference in the world. How many of you want to not just pass through here unnoticed, but you want to make a mark in the world and have people remember for a long time that you were here? Well, don't discount yourself and think, well, you know, that, that's only for the people on the platform or the people on television. It's for every single child of God. God has something for each of us to do. We have a part to play. You have something that nobody can do as good as you can do it. And if you don't do it, it's going to hurt all the rest of us. You never will be as excited as you will be if you are really in the middle of fulfilling your destiny. Nothing can ever make you as satisfied and fulfilled as knowing that you're chasing after God with your whole heart. Amen? But fear is Satan's tool. Yes, it's from the devil. For God hath not given us a spirit of fear. Let's settle that. When you feel afraid, it's not God trying to tell you don't do that. 
That's not the way God works. God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Amen. So when we feel fear, we can be pretty much assured that it's Satan trying to keep us from doing what God would have us to do or what would be the best thing for us to do. Or he may just be trying to make you miserable. The Bible says that fear hath torment. Fear brings torment. And I've even discovered that dread, which I believe is a very close relative of fear, can also bring torment. I try to practice in my life not even letting myself dread things. Don't dread going to the grocery store. Don't dread doing your dishes. Don't dread cutting the grass. Don't dread sitting down and paying your bills. Don't let that spirit of dread and fear get into your life. Know who you are in Christ. Know that you can do whatever you need to do through the strength of God that is in you and live with your head held up high, your shoulders back, walk strong, and live courageously. Amen? Amen? It's time for the body of Christ to stand up and be counted and stop being wimpy and whiny and having a problem with everything. There's so many different kinds of fears that it's unbelievable. I mean, if, if, you, if you look up phobias in a, an encyclopedia, my gosh, pages and pages and pages and pages of things that people are afraid of. One of the things that most people have a problem with at some time or other in their life, can't say that everybody does, but I know I did and I think a lot of people do, is the fear of man. What are they gonna think? What are they gonna say? What are they gonna do? What are they not gonna do? If I don't please them, will they shut me out of their life? Will they reject me? Will I be lonely? And I believe that Satan really uses the fear of man to not only bring torment, but to keep people from following their own heart. You know, I don't think there's anything worse than feeling in your heart that you believe that you're supposed to be doing something, but cowering down to somebody else. And many times it's not even them trying to control you, it's just insecurity on our part that lets them control us because we want them to approve of everything that we do. Do you know that no matter what you do, 10% of the people are never going to like you? I mean, that's just like a statistic from the experts. No matter what we do, some people are not going to like us. Well, the Bible does tell us that we should fear God. A lot of people don't understand that. It's not a wrong kind of fear. It's not the kind of fear like Satan tries to put on us about man. It's a reverential, loving, respectful type of fear, something totally different than the kind of fear that torments us. It's actually, that kind of fear is a fear that keeps us safe. It's like, I trust God, I believe he loves me, he's certainly smarter than I am, I, I'm gonna love him and respect him and trust him enough to just do what he tells me to. How many of you think your life would have turned out so much better if you would have just started practicing that a long time ago? I'm just gonna do. I mean, you know, God's not a, he's not a tyrant that just wants to control people. Everything that God tells us or asks us to do or not to do is for our benefit. It doesn't make him feel better if he can get everybody to follow him. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. He's the way. Do things the way that Jesus did them. Now, I want to share you a scripture that show, show you a scripture that I hope really does something on the inside of your heart. I know it certainly does to me every time I look at it, and it's Isaiah chapter 8, verse 13. The Lord of hosts regard him as holy and honor his holy name by regarding him as your only hope of safety. Wow. <laughs> I do not know what people in the world are doing today who don't have their hope in God. I mean, what kind of hope do you have if you can't put your hope in God? And let him be your fear 
and let him be your dread, lest you offend him by your fear of man and distrust of him. Wow. So, it actually offends the Holy Spirit when instead of following him, respecting, loving, honoring him enough, having enough reverential fear and awe of God, that I let a person misdirect me from what I feel like that I'm supposed to be doing with God because I'm so afraid of them and what they're going to think and what they're going to say and what they're going to do that I prefer to have their approval than God's approval. I prefer to have their friendship than God's friendship. The Bible says that offends God. And I think that's something that we need to seriously consider tonight. It's not just a, well, you know, I just... I mean, I'm just insecure. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm just, I'm just fearful and I just don't want to be lonely. I don't want to lose my friends. No, let's get it. It offends God. <laughs> it offends God. If we cower to man, you have a destiny to fulfill. God wants to do wonderful, amazing things in your life. Every one of you, don't sit there and think she's not talking to me. And those of you watching my television, don't think I'm just talking to the people in this room. One of the main reasons why we're here in this building tonight is so we can record these messages to talk to you. Amen? And God does not want us to let people manipulate us and control us. And like I said, they're not even always trying to do that. I mean, if you're real insecure, you can just get around somebody that's got a strong personality. And if you don't stand up for yourself, they will push you around, but they don't even really know half the time they're doing it. Let me tell you something, if you don't know what you wanna do, I'll be happy to tell you what we're gonna do. If you have no plan of your own, I'll be happy to convince you that you should follow my plan. I'm just a motivated leader, strong personality. I've got direction. I've got purpose. And people who won't stand up for themselves get run over, and it's not always the other person's fault. You say, well, can we actually offend God? Well... In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, the Bible says, Do not offend the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed. Now, in those verses, before and after verse 30, it talks specifically about anger and, and bad attitudes and arguing and strife and fighting and bickering, saying that that offends the Holy Spirit. But here we have in Isaiah that our fear of man is offensive to the Holy Spirit. That doesn't mean that you lose your salvation. Doesn't mean that God doesn't love you anymore. But let me tell you something. Now look at me and let me tell you something. The Holy Spirit lives in you, and if he's offended, you feel it. You know, being a Christian doesn't just mean you go to church a couple times a week and sit in a, a chair and gawk at the preacher. That's not what it means to be a Christian. To be a Christian means that Christ is living in you. He's in you. And if he's grieved, you're going to feel grieved. If he's sad, you're going to feel sad. Likewise, if he's pleased, you're going to feel that. We're in a relationship with God through Christ. A close, intimate, personal, yes, even a conversational relationship. He's your friend. Being a Christian is not about following a bunch of rules and regulations and doing your duty and hoping you get your check mark on your little spiritual calendar in heaven. It's about relationship with Christ through, I mean, with God through Christ. To be a Christian means to be a Christian <laughs> or to be a follower of Christ. If you're not ready to follow Christ, then stop calling yourself a Christian and get the bumper sticker off your car. Amen?
We're so concerned about our silly reputation. Well, what will people think? Well, what if I'm, what if I lose my friends? You know, I, I can tell you something and I don't, I don't mean to be negative or tell you something that's gonna scare you, but if you're gonna fully follow Jesus, you can pretty much figure on losing some of your friends. Matter of fact, you might lose a bunch of them. You could even lose all of them. And it's not even really that they think you're wrong because down deep inside they know that you're not, but they're not ready to make the decision that you're ready to make. So it's easier to find something wrong with you than to admit that maybe they're lacking in something in their life. How many of you, when you made a decision to really fully follow God, or even to just follow God, maybe you haven't even gotten into the fully part yet, <laughs> how many of you lost friends or family rejected you because of you made that decision? Well, you know what? I don't, there's some hands not up, but there's more hands up than aren't. You know, that's our first test right there. Are you gonna let the fear of man cause you to cower down? You know, to be honest with you, nobody cares that much if you go to a church somewhere and claim some kind of denomination and just go in and go out, and it doesn't change you much, and you don't make any waves. That's kind of even socially acceptable. But when, when you get really saved, I mean, when, when, you, when you're born again and you, you have that new life on the inside of you and you don't want to do the things that you used to do and you don't like what you used to like and you found something that maybe other people aren't seeing. Now, you're about to make some major progress and don't think the devil's going to roll the red carpet out and say, oh... The Bible promises us that we will be persecuted <laughs> for righteousness' sake, and it says, blessed are ye. Blessed are ye. So I can say, if you chose to follow Christ and your friends rejected you, blessed are you. You are blessed. You're in good company because they rejected Jesus. Amen? Amen? You say, well, Joyce, I can't help the way I feel. I mean, I don't want to feel afraid, but I just, I just am. Who says we have to be comfortable or we get to be comfortable about everything that we do? When I decided to follow the call of God on my life, it was, it was wonderful, but it was a nightmare. Because women didn't do that. I was in a church denomination where women certainly didn't do that. I got asked to leave my church. Family members thought we were crazy. We literally lost all of our friends. It was a hard, hard, hard time for me. But I look back now and it actually frightens me to think where I might be today. What have you already missed? by letting the fear of man control you? And what might you miss in the future if you don't make a change? And you know, maybe this isn't an issue for you right now. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But this is a great message for everybody because sooner or later in your life, you're gonna know that God wants you to do something and somebody whose respect and love and approval that you want is going to be against it. and you're gonna to have to make a decision about what you're gonna do. Making a decision doesn't always change your feelings. You may still feel afraid, but you can do it even if you have to do it afraid. The thing we have to understand about fear is the only way you can conquer it is to confront it. The only way you can conquer fear is to confront it. It will never go away unless you drive it back into hell where it came from. 
And the only way you can do that is if you keep going forward while the devil is trying to drive you backwards. Fear is an evil spirit. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. God's given us power and love and a sound mind. How concerned are you about your reputation? Go home and have a meeting with yourself. <laughs> We're always meeting with everybody. Your, your calendar may be full of meetings after meetings after meetings. Well, why don't you cancel a couple of them and have a meeting with yourself? You'd be surprised what you can find out about yourself if, if you kind of get in a room by yourself and have a come to Jesus meeting. How concerned am I about my reputation? How many things do we do just to impress people that really don't even have that much to do with what God wants us to do? What do you do or what have you done in the past when people have not agreed with the direction that you're taking? Are you an approval addict? Some people are just addicted to approval. They just can't hardly do anything if they don't think everybody is like, oh, yeah, that's, mm, yeah, ooh, love your hairdo, love your outfit, wow, that's great, mm. There's nothing more exciting than being the person that God created you to be. Strange as you might be, be yourself. Amen. I mean, really, who wants to be just like everybody else? How ultimately boring is that? Galatians chapter 1, verse 10. I love these scriptures, these next couple of scriptures I'm gonna read you. The Apostle Paul. Now, am I trying to win the favor of men or of God? Do I seek to please men? <laughs> if I were still seeking popularity with men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ the Messiah. Wow. If I would have not followed the call of God on my life in order to keep my friends, stay in my church, and be well thought of by people? Oh my gosh. Oh, Lord God, it's so scary to even think about it. And it's scary to think about how, how tempted we are. Come on, I want you to take this serious tonight. How tempted we are. Sometimes you even think, well, you know, if they all think that, I mean, if I'm the only one doing it, I mean, they are right. Women don't do this. Let me tell you something. You got to shut your head off sometimes. And I'm not talking about just being ignorant and stupid, but I mean, sometimes you got to just shut your brain off and, and you, you've got to look in your heart. You got to get away from the voices of people Get somewhere with God and say, what do you want me to do in this situation? What is your plan for my life? And help me, God, if people don't like it, to follow you. Are you living to please God every day? Are you following Him or other people? You know, I firmly believe that the more we live to please God, the happier we will be. But you know, in order to live to please God, you have to be a little bit of a courageous person because God may ask you to do some things that are uncomfortable for you. He may give you new opportunities that in order to take those opportunities, you've got to maybe be at risk a little bit. And you know, especially when it comes to not letting people give the direction to our lives, Sometimes we have to be willing to confront them or to stand up to the things that they want us to do.
But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and, you know, taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, as we travel around the world, we meet so many wonderful children that have had such desperate need in their life. And we're so grateful to be able to help them. Today, we happen to be in Thailand. And this little boy's name is Somded. And he's had some tragic things in his life, but thank God, through your help, he's now living in the children's home here, and his life is looking very bright. His parents both died when he was six in an auto accident. And when they found him to bring him here to the home, he had had severe ear infections, which had caused hearing loss and lots of other problems in his ears. So he's had about two years of medical treatment on his ears, and thank God he can hear fine now. And so thank you for helping us provide homes for some dead and for other little boys and girls like him all around the world. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je je zelfs af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand.